disposing of waste. I know we were both thinking it, but I wasn't actually talking about getting rid of this YouTube channel, so save hurting my feelings for another day. Hi, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Now, before you throw that heap of old medicines in the bin, let's talk through some things first. What we're going to talk about is community pharmacy's role in the disposal of unwanted medicines. But first, a bit about medicines waste. Once a medicine leaves a pharmacy in general, that stock can't be reused and has to be disposed of. This is why it's important that you only order medicines you need and make sure you actually need the medicines that you're taking when collecting from the pharmacy. And before bringing back medicines for disposal, just make sure first it's not the sort of thing that you are likely to need in the near future. These small steps can reduce the impact of medicines waste on the NHS. Of course, there might be a range of reasons that you no longer need to take some medicines. It might be the medicines expired, in which case they're no longer safe, or the medicines have been changed by the prescriber and are no longer needed, or you may have just stopped taking them. Whatever the reason, community pharmacy may be the best place to take them. The same way that for certain types of household weights there are skips or points for these to be sorted, community pharmacy can act as a collection point for the medicines that are no longer needed. This includes waste medicines from residential homes, but not medicines from nursing homes. Nursing homes have to have their own arrangements for medicine disposal. So, what are the aims of pharmacy's role in this? What are the advantages of pharmacy's role in this? Well. It's an easy method of safely disposing of unwanted medicines. It also reduces the unwanted medicines in people's homes, thereby reducing the risk of accidental poisonings or the diversion of medicines to people it wasn't intended to. It also protects the public by reducing the risk of their exposure to unwanted medicines that would have otherwise been disposed of in a non-secure manner. And it's also better for the environment. Please do note, it should only be medicines that are given to the pharmacy team to sort. If in doubt, check with the pharmacy before bringing anything in. I'm sure they'd appreciate that more than being stuck with old batteries, chemicals, plants and other non-medicinal products. Okay, so now you have some medicines that need returning. You take it to the pharmacy. The first process may be that they ask some questions relating to whether or not it can be accepted, such as. Is it only medicines that are being returned? Is there anything in there that may affect the health and safety of our staff? And are there any sharps or needles? No, there are some things pharmacies can't accept. For example, in some areas, pharmacies can't dispose of needles or sharps associated with treatments. But again, if the pharmacy can't do it themselves, they should be able to signpost you to the place that would be able to collect them if they are unable to dispose of them safely for you. Okay, so now all is good and the pharmacy takes it to a specified place ready to dispose of them. Now here they need special containers to do that and some regulations they have to follow. A few things that the pharmacy needs to do here. This includes, number one, ensuring they have the appropriate safety equipment in place to sort the medicines. That might be an apron, gloves and safety goggles. Number two, where there's confidential information on the labels on the boxes, these would also need to be disposed of in a secure manner and not placed with the medicine waste. So too any boxes, leaflets or other non-medicinal items. Number three, separating medicines according to the detailed waste requirements. For example, some of the more controlled medicines have separate disposal procedures compared to the other medicinal waste. Medicines that are toxic to living cells, also known as cytotoxic, are separated from the other medicines. There may also be rules comparing patient returned medicines to the pharmacy's own expired medicines. Generally, categories of waste shouldn't be mixed together. As well as following these detailed procedures, there's also the responsibility of the pharmacy to comply with a lot of the legislation that comes with it, being registered for particular exemptions, the security of storing the waste, the staff training, the procedures in place to minimise the risks, and so on. 
So there you have it. The main other waste we need to discuss? All of this effort without you having liked, shared or subscribed. So, you know, please do. Many thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you next week.